welcome to another episode of Royal Rumble. Please step by for the upcoming fight. This time, the Dark Elves will face up against the High Elves. So welcome to another episode of Royal Rumble and thank you for tuning in. In this episode I'm playing with the Dark Elves and I'm facing up against the High Elves. So if you take a look over here to my army composition there's nothing new and not changing anything at all over here. So in fact if you take a look on the um, competitive point of view um, you have everything in it. You have here everything in it what you need against the High Elves. So we have the best infantry unit you can get uh, from the Dark Elf roster. We have um, a lot of them, so you can deploy really wide, so you have a really wide front line, so you can flank really hard. Um, you have a lot of mobility with the, um, with the Cold War Knights. You, we have um, a Dreadlord and a Canid Assassin, which are really able to sna snipe out enemy lords and dragons and all that stuff. So as I said, in my opinion, there's no reason to change anything at all over here. And since I played this uh, build over here, I never lost one game. So it performs really well and the win rate is really high. But it's not because I'm the best build creator on the world. <laughs> no, it's in my opinion because um, the High Elves perform so bad against the Dark Elves. So the matchup is it's such in, in such a high favor for the Dark Elves, in my opinion. Um, this is the reason. Um, I think the High Elves have a lot of problems to handle it against all factions <laughs> nearly because they are too expensive. So um, they have they have also some problems. They have missile infantry that causing no armor piercing and all that stuff. And um, in this game against these four fac uh, three factions, the High Elves perform really bad in my opinion. It's very difficult. Maybe they have a little good a good matchup against the Skaven, but I'm not sure. So I will not talk any longer over here on my to my boat. So we have our very elite high, high tier high tier infantry front front line of the Hag with Haganef executioners, um, very heavily armored and causing a lot of armor piercing damage. We have a Canid assassin over here to snipe out enemy heroes, lords, dragons, and all that stuff. And he's also really good in melee combat. So we have 70 melee attack over here, what is huge. We have a lot of melee defense and you also can put him in a melee combat against the infantry unit and all that stuff. So it's it's really good, it's really good. And um, also against, you can um, you can send them into a group of cavalry also to to, the, to defend the charge in or all that stuff. So he's also melee combat quite good. Then I have a Treadlord on a cold one, is always a lot of mobility, very huge weapon strength, really good to snap out enemy lords and um, dragons and as I said a lot of mobility in the front line and uh, causing a lot of damage actually on the uh, especially on the cold run really good over here. Here in the forest we have three groups of cold one knights and the plan was of course a little sneak attack over here to walk through this forest or to run through the forest to the end over here came out of the forest over here and then to attack his archers that was the plan of course and yeah, let's see how this works out. So let's go to my opponent over here. As I said, I would like to show this match uh, because it's really, it was a really uh, exciting match, uh, really high rank match. My opponent was really good, and I think it is a quite good match. So my opponent brought two spearmen over here on each side, uh, one over here and one over here, and. Uh, very often I see that uh, from a lot of players to bring, bring that they bring a lot of spearmen, because the problem is the high elves have no black have no uh, bleak swords or swords, swordsmen and stuff like that, so there is no other infantry unit that is cheap like these spearmen over here, and for this reason to increase the amount of units some players bring a lot of spearmen. But the problem is these spearmen will get massacred from nearly every infantry unit of the Dark Elves. So the performance against infantry is very, very bad. Of course, it is they have an anti-large bonus, they have charge defense against large foes. They can defend themselves, so they can prevent charge-ins from maybe my Cold War Knights. Maybe also he's, he expected a War Hydra. But as I said, it's in my opinion always a bad decision to mess them or to um, bring a lot of them. Because against infantry, 
they perform bad. Then we have uh, this Itilma chariots over here. Also in my last games, I, uh, a, lot of, a lot of my opponents brought these uh, chariots over here. And um, yeah, I'm not a fan of it because I think the Dark Elves especially can handle it really, really, um, really good or can handle it really uh, good against these chariots. So they can snap them out really fast with Cold One Knights, with Dreadlords, with uh, War Hydras. So uh, there's no, I think, and also these chariots causing no armor piercing. So we have 16 armor piercing here and you need the armor piercing against, for example, against the Hagen of Executioners. So this is, in my opinion, not a good pick, or I'm not a fan of it, let me say it like this. Of course, the weapon strength is quite huge, also the bonus versus infantry is quite huge, and the armor is quite huge, but as I said, I'm not a big fan of it, and I see them really often, in fact. Then we have the White Lions of... Uh, how can I pronounce that? So we have White of Grace, Grace? I'm not sure, sorry for that, I'm, I'm not sure how I can pronounce this over here. Um, but I like this unit, in fact, as I said, all, all high elf infantry units causing armor piercing. And this unit is quite cost efficient. We have, I think you can deploy that, these guys for 800 bucks. Um, they are quite heavily armored, they're very elite, of course. Um, they're causing a lot of armor piercing damage over here, 26. Also, the weapon strength is quite good. The melee stats are really good. And, um, I think it's a, <laughs> it's a cheap option, <laughs> in fact. So they are, of course, not cheap. Mid-range unit. But for that price, I think they are quite cost efficient. But of course, against these Hagen of Executioners, also these guys will have a bad day over here, I think. Um, then we have um, Swords Masters of Hoed. So um, these guys, of course, they can compete very well against the Hagen of Executioners. High tier elite infantry unit of the High Alps with anti infantry, with a real anti infantry bonus. and causing a lot of armor piercing damage and um, these guys can compete really well against the Hagen of Executioners in fact. And then we have another unit of Swordsmasters of Hoed over here, another uh, unit of White Lines of Grace, <laughs> Grace and Spearmen over here. So they're, they're, they are for the protection of the right flag, I'm pretty sure about that. So you can see my opponent deployed really wide over here and uh, same as me. So it was, it's a quite wide front line on both sides. Then we have in the back line uh, lot of sea guards with shields over here. So these guys are really able to protect themselves. But as I said in the, in the pre-combat, um, or as I said, um, these guys, or uh, the, uh, the, complete, uh, armor, the complete missile infantry of the high elves causing no armor piercing missiles. And this is a huge disadvantage. So even if they shoot constantly on the front line, they will not cause a, a lot of they will cause damage after time will add up. Of course, we have four armor piercing amount over here, but uh, especially against these Hagen of Executioners, they are so heavily armored. We have 110 armor here. Um, it is it is not really cost efficient because these guys are really expensive. We have, I think, 700. You can deploy them for over 700. And yeah, this is not very good. As I said, you need armor piercing missiles. And yeah, but the High Elves don't have any armor piercing missile infantry. So we have four groups over here, and as I said, I like so they, they are really able to protect themselves for some time. Of course, a group of Cold One Knights against one group of Lothan Seaguard. Of course, the Cold One Knights will also win, but they will hold the line for some time, and they will also uh, cause a lot of damage to large units. Uh, so this combination of spearmen and archers is really strong, or you don't, they are not so squishy like other archer units. Then we have um, a techless over here and with all these uh, very important spells with this Cain's Ring of Fury, um, um, po Potion of Chario, Ch Charoy, um, and of course the Net of Amintok over here and yeah, so very very mighty cast. So let's start over here and yeah, with some cinematics. So as I said, we are really right front line over here, and now these phoenix came up, or came down, cast his spell over here, <laughs> causing a lot of damage. 
a huge amount of damage to my front line over here. You can see that. <laughs> One unit is insta routing with instant routing from insta route from these Hagenev executions over here, um, causing a lot of damage. These also these guys took a lot of damage from that, and also these guys. And we can see over here now the chariots also kick in. So from behind and yeah, um, and as I said, I took a lot of damage from this spell from these. Um, from these phoenix, so it, it is that's, that spell over here, the Canid's Ring of Fury, I think. And you can cast it on straight line, I think there's a wind spell. And uh, let's take a look just for a second. Yeah, there's a wind spell, and uh, as I said, causing a lot of damage at this straight line to my to my units. But now you can see also my Cold One Knights came in, and I, as I said, the Cold, I have a, you have a lot of mobility with that. And, now, of course, I snapped out his ultimate chariots, but you can see he, they are stuck now. They are uh, from the net of Amnitok. And of course, I sent my dread one, uh, my dread lord, directly behind his techless to hunt him down. So he has a very mighty spell over here, and it's very important. I, it was what was very important for me to to snap him out really fast. And as I said, the dread lord is really able to do this, and had a lot of speed, and is really mobile, and yeah. So um, you can see my candid assassin over here is in is a melee combat as I said. So against the spearman, of course, <laughs> he will perform also really good in melee combat. 70 melee attack stats, so very good over here. So you can see the chariots are routing. The cold one knights are really able to 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 send them offline really fast. You can see 22 kills. The performance is really bad. So don't bring any chariots. I recommend. I would not recommend that because you can snap them out really fast. It's my opinion. In in this matchup, so everything I say is especially also regarding to my build is uh, is I mean it or it's regarding to this matchup over here against the high elves. So in other matchups, maybe they perform better. The the, the chariots, I'm not sure, but in this matchup, I think it is not. It is not worth it to bring it. Not worth to bring it. You can see the Haganef executioners do a lot of or work, do a lot of work over here and kill a lot of units. And now the Lord and Sea Guard are also not able to hold up or to kill my um, to kill my Cold War Knights in combination with Hagen with these Haganef executioners over here. So everything broke up over here, and he was not able to to hold the line. As I said, I'm, in my opinion, um, I, for me, there's no reason to change anything about, at all about this, uh, about my build over here, because the performance is very well. It was really good against the high elves. Um, as I said, I um, regard, as in this matchup, this build is really good and against the high elves. And as I said, the high elves have, a, have really big trouble or problems to deal with the dark elves overall. Even if you would take other build, or there are a lot of builds you can create, of course. And um, in my opinion, the dark high elves have really trouble to handle it against the dark elves, because in my opinion, the high elves are too expensive. There is no really a cheap unit. There is also no ammo piercing unit, um, uh, missile infantry ammo piercing unit. There is no ammo piercing unit, cavalry unit. So it's no ammo piercing cavalry unit. And these are a lot of problems, and you need these also, all these ammo piercing units to compete against the Dark Elves and to compete against other factions. So um, in this game, the, I think the worst factions are the High Elves. And um, I'm not sure how, is, how, will be the, how will be the performance against the old factions, but we will see that. So, okay, um, thank you for tuning in and um, let me know what you think and uh, know what you would like to see. And see you on the next episode of Royal Rumble. Thank you for tuning in and uh, have a nice day. Thank you.